Yo, what's up, what's up? I'm Renz Davis. Welcome to another Renz Reactions. But wait, it's a clash of the Street Fight promotions. Oh yes, we have Defend Fight Club versus King of the Streets. Let's get it on, guys. Dang, that was really good. Not just really good, that was flavor number 11. The newest to the Ray's flavor combinations. This is South Beach. D-A-N-G-Y, dang. Where can I get some of that? In the promo link down below with the promo code Renz Energy. Give it a try. Worst comes to worst. Hey, you didn't knock it till you rocked it. So on with the show, guys. On with the show. Today we have Jonas, Haman Jonas versus Malt. One name to rule them all. So it should be an interesting fight. It's going to be Styles or Style. We got a wrestler from Germany versus a Muay Thai boxer from Germany. Without further ado, though, let's commence. In the red corner we have Haman Jonas, aka the Pitbull, at a height of 180 centimeters and a weight of 86 kilograms, his dominant style of wrestling should be very interesting. In the blue corner we have Malt, aka the M16, at 187 centimeters in height and 88 kilograms in weight, he is a Thai boxer from Germany. This is his debut, so we're going to see if he walks away with the one, or walks away with none. This fight is going to be contested at light heavyweight. Pretty stoked to see this one. The last time we saw Haman Jonas fight, he got a decision win against Aslantix. He just grinded it out, took it to the ground as much as he could, and kept the pace going. Amazing strength, amazing cardio. I'm kind of curious to see how this one plays out. I've not seen Malt fight ever. I might have to review some of the King of the Streets fighting stuff. See where it goes. Rules of the rounds, three three-minute rounds. They're going to be using eight-ounce gloves and the MMA rules where they're not allowed to knee the head of a downed opponent. And don't forget, guys. You should be liking and subscribing to Fen Fight Club, but help a small YouTuber become an extra medium YouTuber. Round one begins. Now, key to success for Haman is going to be getting in that close range and getting to the ground immediately. And they do get to the ground. <laughs> Malt on top, he's doing a decent job with the sprawl, but will he be able to keep it? Okay, and it looks like he's about to get himself back to the feet, which is good news. He's got those double underhooks, kind of like a body lock. Man, this would be a good time to have a cage to kind of screw around with. And he gets him down to side control. Will he be able to keep it? He's got his right frame on Malt's neck, very nice. Starting to throw a little bit of ground and pound. But Malt's keeping good posture control. Oh, he gets rolled off. Now Malt is on top, looks like he's landed into half guard. No, he's in a full mount. Will he be able to keep it though? He's throwing some ground and pound. Those look like 12 to 6 elbows a little bit, and he got rolled off into guard. Now Malt's not doing a bad job at keeping the posture broken. This is exactly what I would do. Legs wrapped, head wrapped, keep the guy's posture on top broken down. Subtle pause in the action for this because, oh, there we go. Jonas is starting to throw some punches from this down position. He's getting that frame in, it looks like. He really wants to. There we go. Oh, 
He's getting some of those little punches in, but eventually those get annoying and become bigger punches. Really big punches, oh my goodness. And not to mention, those frames, when you're pushing someone down and they're trying to pull you back in, those can get annoying. Those become a pain in the neck, I tell you what. Less than a minute to work in the first round. Ooh, that's a good old-fashioned wrestling technique. A little pulverizing grind. I used to do that myself until someone did it to me. I'm like, oh man, that's what I'm doing to people? No way. Now, Jonas is doing very little to advance position. He has like that Mark Kerr style of ground and pound. He doesn't want to advance position, he just wants to keep a position and throw whatever strikes he can. Just exhaust his opponent until a finish occurs. Big hammering strikes. He's getting some posture on that now. Five seconds of work. I'm kind of curious to see if this is going to lead into the second round. And round one is ended. Alright, that first round, very tricky to score. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That was a clear and dominant round for Jonas. He just quickly got himself back into a dominant position after the first 30 seconds, 40 seconds of being kind of stuck in the clench. <coughs> there were a few moments where uh, Malt, the M16, he was starting to take it back, but he couldn't hold that position. Not enough time on the ground to establish, you know, like a particular control. Now, I'm kind of curious what Haman's corner is going to start recommending to him. If anything, don't worry about the kicks. Worry about just closing that distance, locking it up, and just throwing him down. Now, Malt is going to be... Now, Malt, I think he's going to have to get some real criticism in his corner where he has to keep it standing, use the 1-2 to keep it kind of at distance, start fighting from the outside. He cannot afford to get in that clinch since his takedown defense does not seem to be on par with Haman's takedown offense. But we'll see what happens. Round 2, just around the corner, guys. Oh, damn, that's good. Very flashy can as well, just saying. Here we go, guys. Round two. Let's commence. Show respect, tap the gloves. Gotta love that, guys. Now, Malt is trying to go in arms extended. Not a good idea. And did he just pull guard? This is not a good position. Especially against a wrestler. Now... Haman seems to be going for a front headlock from that down position, which is a good position. Malt is trying to grab the shirt. I don't think that's part of the MMA rules. Now, Haman still has a good sprawl spot, which is good for him. Keeps him down, keeps a lot of pressure on the head and shoulder area of Malt. And eventually, he's, it looks like he's trying to throw those punches around the arm to hit the head. I would be working for the body. Just keep throwing strikes at those floating ribs. Make Malt think what he wants to do and how much he can take from that position. Now, oh, there we go. That's what I was thinking. Lands himself in the half guard from that little spin out to try and get to the back control. Now, this is definitely not where Malt wants to be. Malt wants to be on his feet. He needs to scramble and get out of there immediately. This, however, is exactly where Jonas wants to be. He wants to be right in the spot, just hammer and nail. And guess what? Malt is the nail, so Jonas, start throwing that hammer. And with less than a minute 40, it looks like Malt is trying to work for an armbar and some upkicks fail. Back side control, this is a good spot to start throwing knees to the ribs. And it looks like Malt is not really doing much to defend himself or advance his position. This is not what I would call intelligent defense from a least dominant position. He's just kind of pausing the action, staying turtled. He needs to move or do something because he's going to get some brain freeze. They're both getting some brain freeze right there, man. Dang. Now, honestly, if I was Jonas right now, I'd be using that right arm to start throwing those rib shots. I mean, those elbows to the ribs. 
And good transition. Still keeping a dominant top spot. Right into half guard. Beautiful. Haman is really good at getting that little frame right in there. He's keeping a dominant top position and just smothering him. Most excellent. Right now it looks like this is a promotional battle kind of thing. Defend Fight Club is definitely taking the victory here. Oh hey, look at that. It looks like some cherry snow down there. Huh. Imagine that. Gets himself into the mount. Very good. He is starting to really come down with that hammer. He needs to get that right hook in to keep that dominant position. He's got good top control. He's not falling off yet, which is good news. But I think... Oh, round's over. Two rounds in the book, and I gotta be honest, Malt is not impressing me right now. I thought he was going to try and keep it standing a lot more, but it seems like he's trying to engage in some grappling matches here. Not a good look. Like, if anything, I would really like to see the M16 engage in a much more striking, engaged approach. Because nothing against Haman. His wrestling is amazing. He is doing a good job getting it to the ground, establishing a dominant position which you, you can't escape from. But his striking is very stiff. He doesn't really throw his punches or his kicks with a very fluid motion. But that doesn't mean I want to be on the end of it. Even though they're stiff strikes, he throws them with bad intentions. Very strong strikes. And there we go. There's that mount position. He was starting to throw the hammers, the round punches. He was getting some really good shots in. Beautiful. I can only imagine that Malt's corner is in panic mode. They're like, hey, you got to start doing something. Throw the one, two. Keep it standing. Take a sip from the glass bottle and just keep yourself moving. Do not get bogged down. This is not the time. Not the... Oh, yeah. I just checked my watch, too. It's not the time. See, I'm not going to lie, guys. Just a little moment here. When I see people using those swabs on people's noses, I don't think, man, they got something wrong with their nose. I think, man, is he positive or not? See, that corner guy's got the right idea. Keep him at bay. Use those ones and twos. Now, I think it's too late for that. The time for using those ones and twos to keep Haman at distance was in the first round. But he was engaging more in who's stronger from the clench. Bad idea. The clench is where wrestlers will always take control and get to the ground, in my opinion. I could be wrong. Leave in the comment section. Tell me I'm wrong. I might have a discussion with you. Round three begins. Ooh, short uppercut looks like. Gets him down and he is like throwing. Now this is the part where he has to intelligently defend himself to keep himself in the match. He's trying for a single, but for the most part he's still stuck in that turtle position. Not very good look. This is a good spot where Jonas can start starting, start throwing bad intentions and start finishing. Maybe get to the side, throw the outside cradle, get him back on his back, and start throwing those hammer fists, use that frame. He's throwing. He's going volume striking right now. Very commendable. He knows that the finish is right there. He knows that this is not going to get stood up right now. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Round is over. Less than a minute in the third round, Jonas takes the finish victory, TKO. Dang, that was a good fight. That short little uppercut, looked like a shovel uppercut. Very nice. Starts throwing the hammer fist, and just establishes the dominant position from the front headlock for a moment. My goodness, Jonas, good performance, man. You are putting the wrestlers in this in a good light right now. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But dang. That's a very cinematic shot right there. Good silhouette image right there. But yes, Jonas walks away at 2-0. Oh. Nicely done. Bravo. 
Das ist gut, ja. Malt, he's got some work to do. Now, to be fair, a lot of the strikers that have come on to defend Fight Club, they've all had a particular issue with the ground. It seems like a lot of these strikers are pretty pure strikers. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Hopefully, I am wrong. I like the idea that if you're a martial artist, you know what to do on the ground and on the feet. And here we go. The referee is going to give us our victor. Haman Jonas. The pit bull goes to 2-0. Very nice performance. Now, honestly, I thought that was a great fight. That was well played and very good display of footage. This is like a highlight reel for the pit bull. Oh my gosh. I mean, dang. D-A-N-G, dang. His wrestling is on par, but the only improvement I can see myself to give to Haman Jonas is work your striking. Don't worry about your kicks. If you are going to worry about your kicks, worry about your front kicks. Those front kicks can lunge you forward to get your takedowns much more efficiently. Imagine throwing that stomping front kick into a double leg or a single leg or into the body lock to throw for a suplex. But work your boxing. You got some good people in your corner between, um, who is it, Arthur and David Grass, the two um, boxers from Germany, the two brothers, I mean. Those two can definitely sharpen up your hands to get you better at striking your way into the clench and then getting your takedown. But more importantly, don't be afraid to throw knees from the bottom or from your top position on the ground. There were spots where you were on the top of side control, the, um, the top of back side control, where you could have started annihilating some ribs with those knees. But it's admirable that you use your hands only, man. That's a good classic wrestler style right there. But definitely embrace your inner wrestler, the old school pan creation style. As for Malt, my only recommendation is <clears throat> you gotta become proficient at scrambles. You can definitely get yourself back in the game, get yourself a victory at um, Defend Fight Club. But I think you need to worry about the ground game because that's been a major, major upsetting factor for a lot of strikers that are pure strikers that go into Defend Fight Club. They don't have an answer for when they're taken down and they think, okay, well, I've seen this on M uh, an MMA fight before. I get to shoot for an armbar. But you did have good control of the head when you were down. You controlled the posture to very certain degrees, which helped you out not take as much damage. But dang, bravo, guys. Defend Fight Club he light heavyweights, you guys are representing. Representing. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Wait a minute. I'm not finished yet. So, I'm on a quest. 500 subscribers before July 14th, 2021. That is 07142021. Yeah, we're going there. If I get 500 before that date, I do a Renz Reveals sparring. I'll do one round kickboxing, three minutes. One round grappling, five minutes. And then one round mixed martial arts style, five minutes. Let the games begin, guys. I hope to get annihilated, but more importantly, I hope to put on a good show for all you amazing, beautiful, very delightful viewers. I have not had one viewer yet that has hated me, which is amazing. I love that I have such a good fan base and such good friends and such good, awesome, amazing viewers. You guys are lovely. Mm. Travel safely. Rock on, guys.